You gave me this book. Then he rushed to his room, packed his belongings. I'm going to leave this house. He leave this house and said he's already old enough to survive. Couple of years and he became a successful businessman and he became rich. I don't know if he bought the car that he wants. And he received a message. His dad is so old. Then he decided to come back. Then when he came back home, Thank you for that wonderful song and music. It's all right. It's all right for me to speak today. Thank you. I feel like I'm abandoned by my two companions here. But I feel so blessed that I'll be the speaker today. Pastor James called me. Uh, for the rescue last Saturday because I was sick last Saturday, last Saturday when uh, I saw my name a speaker for this Sabbath. But thank you so much for Pastor James. And I have a second thought of giving the chance to, to uh, give him the message, but somebody's telling me, no, this is your time. Once a year, the elder has the chance to speak. Thank you for that, Pastor James. I might have a second chance because I was scheduled uh, November. Thank you so much for this wonderful privilege that God has given me. And I would like to thank uh, Pastor Bernie, Bernie for giving me the book, uh, Powerful Biblical Preaching. And I told him when he told me, are you okay to speak? Uh, I told him, uh, God has a plan for me, so I'm okay. My message today is a little focus on what we call youth. We're lucky we still have some youth in this church. They call it, uh, how do you call the youth this time? They call themselves millennials. Millennials. I don't know when I was born. I was born uh, what time? When I was born, they don't have laptop. So this is my laptop. I don't have any connection. So this one is connected to God's uh, message. Uh, I'm a little nervous to tell you the truth. But. That shaking will come down until I finish. Um, let me start this way. A young graduating student is excited to go home. He is excited to go home because he wants to tell his wealthy dad what he wants on his graduation day. You know what he wants on his graduation day? He wants a sports car. My dad is wealthy, he can afford it. And his dad, it's okay. Then graduation comes. And he is so excited. You know what his dad gave him? He gave him a book. And he's mad. Despite of your wealth, you gave me this book. Then he rushed to his room, packed his belongings. I'm going to leave this house. He left this house and said he's already uh, old enough to survive. Couple of years and he became a successful businessman. And he became rich. I don't know if he bought the car that he wants. And he received a message. His dad is so old. Then he decided to come back. Then when he came back home, he goes straight 
to the room where he left the book. You know what? When he opened the book, it says a word paid in full and the, and the key dropped and he almost cried. His dad is really good and he regret what he did to his dad because when he get back home, his dad is al he's dead already. So whatever things we receive from our Father, especially the Lord, our Father in heaven, he is so good that whatever he wants, whatever we want, he'll give it to you. But he wants you to learn the word of God. So the title of my sermon today is a little bit uh, focused on uh, youth. But don't worry, we already passed. Uh, I, was, I passed my youth when I was maybe 45 years ago. And I'll tell you, little by little, how did I spend my youth? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. It is very clear, brothers and sisters, how difficult, if your age in a millennial age this time, I, I don't know what year they were born. I heard 1985. I don't know if it is true. Millennials. So, my, my sermon says the youth living in this age will have a stern battle to fight if they make the right principles their rule of action. I was once become a youth, but I doesn't matter what principle is in me. I have the world principle, I do whatever I want. As the time goes by, they offer me to become an elder here. I declined. It's not good for me because as I remember, I did the last of the world. When I'm here, I always remember how sinner I am. But thank you, God. He gave me the chance to come back. It is the highest effort of a large class in our society today to do as others do, to shape their course according to the world's standard. The approval of the world is more value to them than the approval of God. That's me. The approval of the world is more value to me than the approval of God. Then, I do not value the truth I was born Seventh-day Adventist. I don't care. I do whatever I want. But thank you. I'm here in front of you. It says, no dependence can be placed upon them. They are the sports of Satan. You know what is the sports of Satan? Somebody can guess? Yes. 
That's right. Thank you, Sister Sandra. Satan is good on temptation. He's always a winner. There's no second chance to tempt me. I always do on the first temptation. So my principle is I do. I love the world. But this text says love not the world. I love the world so much. But thank you, Lord, for giving me the chance. Thank you, Sister Demi. I cry a lot when I remember how how sinner I am. Thank you for this napkin. I have a little advice to our uh, you today. It's not from me, it's from the word of God. When you are making friends or associate, let reason and the fear of God be our guide. Then I notice myself again. When I pick my own friends, they bring me to this and that. I'm sorry I did that. He said, be firm in purpose regardless of the opinions of others. Many entertain concerning you. They entertain me a lot. So good, I feel really, but I feel sorry now. Those who are drifting in the tide, who love pleasure and self-indulgence, choose the easier way regardless of principle so long as desired are gratified. And this is the thing. This will never stand with the overcomers around the great white throne. I like to thank God for, for my parents for upbringing me as a Seventh-day Adventist. It is a blessing It's not all right to God for you to roam around, love the world, but time will come. He's going to call you back. God loves us so much. Like what the uh, story says, he gave the Bible to his son. But sometimes we make mistake on understanding why you only give me Bible. That's the most important one that we can receive to our parents because they love us so much. In this millennial age, they call it corrupt age. The safeguards of our purity, you know what must we do when we are in this age? We have to be watchful and we have to be prayerful. We are living in an atmosphere of satanic witchery. The enemy will leave a spell around every soul that is not bar barricaded by the grace of Christ. Temptation will come, but if, if we watch against the enemy and maintain the balance of self-control, purity, the, seduce, the seducing spirit will have no influence over us. Remember this, youth. We are in our age what, that we already pass our youth. Most of us, I, I'm a witness. I'm one of them that I love the world. But now, I don't hate the world this time, but I'm trying to do what is best to God, what will give glory to him. It says, if the youth will not willfully rush into danger and needlessly place themselves in the way of temptation and they send evil influences, vicious society 
will avoid by compelled to be in dangerous company. We need to pick our friends, the youth. We don't have much youth in this church. Maybe they don't, they don't make the right decision. Maybe they, have, they compromise their principles. That's what happened to me. I always compromise God's principle, biblical principle, 119, 30, 31. I have chosen the way of truth, thy judgment have I laid before me. I have stick in my unto thy testimonies, O Lord. Put me not to shame. There are two great principles in this world. One of the loyalty and the other is disloyalty. We all need great Christian courage. That commandments of God and faith of Jesus will be plain and distinct. We must have a firm determination to the Lord's will at all times and all places. Not only in the church, brothers and sisters. We might be in the good in the church, but when we go out, I don't know. Let the heavenly desire be applied to the eyes of our own understanding that we may distinguish between truth and error. Bible says, search the word, and when you find, you will stand on how, where the Lord stands. Let me say the Lord's philosophy is the rule of Christian life. The entire being should be imbued in the life-giving principles of heaven. It's not easy to live in this world because Satan is here to tempt us. Our good example is Christ. Let Christ be our example. Christ is committed to principle or attachment to his belief. Let Christ be our example. The life of Christ was distinguished from the general, generality of children. He loves the youth so much because he knows the devil wants to tempt, especially when you are trying to do whatever you want to do. His strength of moral character and his firmness ever led him to be true to his sense and of duty, to adhere to the principles of right, from which no motive, however, how powerful could move him. Money, pleasure, applause, or censure could not purchase, flatter him to consent to a wrong action. He was strong to resist temptation, to discover evil, and firm to abide faithful to his conviction. Let Christ be our example. He took pleasure in discharging his obligation to his parents, and to society without yielding his principles of being contaminated with the impure influence surrounding him when he was in Nazareth. Never did Christ deviate from loyalty to the principles of God. Never did he do anything contrary to the will of his Father. Jesus does not after giving general direction, leave us to the guests. The way amid by paths and dangerous passes, he led us. He led us to straight path, and when we follow him, our footsteps will not slide. So this is the advice to our youth, brothers and sisters. Each soul must live in hourly communion with Christ, 
For he says, without me, ye can do nothing. That's true. His principles are to be our principles, for these principles are the everlasting truth. I'm glad my daughter was here. I always do this. I'll give you an example of character of the Bible who lived by principle. Can you guess one of them? Character in the Bible who lived by principle. Daniel, you're right. Daniel is one of the good examples. Daniel was subjected to the severest temptation that can assail the youth today. He was true to the religious instruction received in early life. He was surrounded with influence, calculated to subvert to those who would vacillate between principle and inclination. Daniel dared not to trust to his own moral power. Prayer to him was a necessity. When I was young, I don't care if I ride in my car, I drive or not. Most of the time, I almost got an accident. I don't have guide on my driving. Time goes by, I learn how to pray, and I notice I have a little, I have a little safe driving. I got camera, I got accident, two tickets in one year. I'm sorry for myself. I pay a lot, waste a lot of money. In the experience of Daniel and his companion, we have an instance of the triumph of principle over temptation to indulge the appetite. Appetite, I don't have much problem. I don't really like pork anyway. I don't eat much of this shrimp, whatever they call it. I, I'm not... I don't have interest on in eating those. I don't eat. One time I have experience with my friends. They call it lechon. I don't eat lechon. I don't eat pork. I don't have nothing. Do you have any, how they call it, uh, uh, tuyo? How do you call it in English? Dried fish. I'd rather eat dried fish than lechon. Oh, no, it's so good. I don't even try lechon. I mistakenly tried, but I chew it out. So appetite is not a problem to me. It shows us that through religious principle, young men may triumph over the lust of fresh flesh. I'm weak on this. I'm revealing myself to you. Who am I? But I'm sorry I did this. Daniel and his companions had made a compromise with those hidden officers and yielded to the pressure of the occasion by eating and drinking as was customary, custom, customary with the Babylonians. The single instance of departure from the principle would have weakened their sense of right, their adherence of wrong, indulgence of appetite, would have the sacrifice of physical vigor, clearness of intellect, and spirit, spiritual power. Sorry.
That's why I'm not a good speaker. I'm sorry. One wrong step would probably have led to others until their connection with heaven being severed. They would have been swept away by temptation. I'll give you another example of a good character in the Bible who is a man of principle. Another guess who wants? Who wants to guess another one? Good. Joseph is a man of principle. Genesis 39 9. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Joseph's gentleness and fidelity won the heart of the chief captain who came to regard him a son rather than a slave. But Joseph's faith and integrity were to be tested by fiery trials. His master's wife endeavored to entice the young man to transgress the law of God. Therefore, he remained untamed by the corruption teeming in that hidden land. But his temptation so sudden, so strong, so seductive, how can we avoid this? I don't want to reveal too much on who am I. I'm very weak. I'm very weak. On the one hand, favor, rewards. On the other, disgrace, imprisonment, perhaps death. His whole future de life depended upon the decision of the moment would principle triumph. Would Joseph still be true to God? Of course. He's a man of principle. Christian principle. Biblical principle. Let's try this. If we make mistake on ourselves, our Christian principle, let's try to do the right principles. Joseph suffered his integrity for his tempter herself by accusing him of foul crime and causing him to be thrust in prison, even in prison, brothers and sisters. He is good on his principle. Potiphar believed his wife charged against Joseph, so that's why they put him in prison. The young Hebrew would have lost his life, but the modesty and uprightness Uprightness had uniformly characterized. Joseph's real character shines out, even in the darkness in dungeon. He held fast his faith and patience. His years and a faithful service had been most cruelly repaid. I don't experience any imprisonment, but my principles, they don't need to be imprisoned. I always make mistake with the principles of man. I try to do my whatever I want. My wife is listening this time, so I'm a little changed. I, to the help of God. I love my wife. She's, she's there. I almost give her up. But thank you, Lord, for giving me another chance to love my family. I love my daughters. I love my wife. Let's do this conclusion, brothers and sisters. Principle, not to be sacrificed. John 14, 27, peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. <laughs> There's always, have been always, with two classes of the, on the earth at the end times, the believers and those who reject him. 
Sinners, however, wicked, ab abominable, and corrupt, by faith in him, will be purified. Don't worry. Even if you're corrupt, even if you're uh, wicked, faith in him will be purified. It says, to the doing of his word. Those who reject Christ and refuse to believe the truth will be filled with bitterness against those who accept Jesus as a personal Savior. My appeal, brothers and sisters, let us true to our faith. Let us have our principles be the principle of Daniel, be the principles of Joseph. Christ did not for an instant seek to purchase peace by betrayal of sacred trust. Peace could not be made by compromise of principles. The children of light from the children of darkness by yielding the principle by compromising the truth. Let us surrender ourselves the peace of Christ in order to make peace or fraternize with the world. Lastly, brothers and sisters, the sacrifice is too costly to make by the children of God to make peace with the world by giving up principles. They will never compromise truth. Let us not compromise our principles, biblical principles, Christian principles. Time will come, the follower of Christ settled in their minds, never yield one principle for the favor of the world. Let them hold the peace of Christ. Brothers and sisters, I don't speak much. I'm, the, I'm not a, uh, I don't have much message. But it says on my, a, a little additional on my conclusion, my brothers and sisters. The world, people need to hear the word of God, not our opinion. What God has to say is more important than what we have to say. Here we hear a lot of sermons, brothers and sisters, that give only a nod to the word of God. This day's biblical sermon will contemporary illustration have become contemporary sermons with occasional biblical erect. You know what the result is? The result is lack of power in the pulpit and a lack of transformation in the church. I'm not saying this church it's not doing the job to save our youth. Let us help each other to save our youth. Let's fill this church with our youth. Let's bring back our kids to come to church and hold and live by the princip Christian principles. Some sermons are just an entertaining, I'm sorry, an entertaining sermon. But it's, I'd say entertaining, but they may not be interesting, but they will affect no lasting change. May the message be today, uh, today be our guide to our Christian principle. Let us help this church to bring our youth May the youth will come to this church and lead this church because time will come. I don't know how long I'm going to live in this world. But let us bring our youth. Let us save them with a Christian principle. Let us pray. Our most gracious and kind, loving Heavenly Father, what a wonderful message that we have received today. The Apostle prayer is my prayer 
Lord, teach me to preach. And the people who's going to listen will form, have a transforming power to their Christian living. Let not this youth be a victim of satanic witchery. Please help us to save our youth. All these things we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.